Today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Brian and the crew take on repowering a classic 25-foot contender, but not without a custom touch. So now it's up to my guys to get this motor all painted up, mounted back on the back of the boat, and get these guys in the water. They're serious fishermen, and they can't wait to try out this new 300. George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Alan Black aboard his 25-foot Boston Whaler Outrage, tricked out for hardcore offshore fishing. He managed to take an old classic boat and bring it up to speed into the 21st century and make it a really worthy offshore modern fishing boat. And with a payday in his sights, Brian splashes the 30-foot Grady White project for the first time. I'm in a brand new boat. I mean, that's what I felt like. I couldn't believe the attention to detail and how everything all wrapped and cleaned up. The boat just came out incredible. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So this morning, headed in the work. Brian gave me a call, had to run over to the paint shop. All right, David, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, listen to me, 300, we're taking it completely apart. You got everything you need? Yeah, I got everything right. else you need. Listen, I want 100% disassembly because I want everything white. I don't want to see any silver at all. All the wiring, Dave, just pull the clamps. I want everything to look factory when it goes back together. Okay. So take the clamps off that we can bolt back on that are just like steel colored that, you know, they're just shiny. They're not like all painted with silver. Anything that's silver is gonna go white. I just want it to look like it came from Yamaha, like a white motor. No problem. All right? All right, cool. cool. Earlier this year, I had a really good client give me a call. They're actually out of South Carolina, and it's time for their 25 contender to get repowered. I did this boat five or six years ago. We actually redid the whole boat to match their 61 Garlington. I told them when they were ready, they're gonna wanna go to the new 300. The platform's perfect for that boat. I've done a couple of them now, and the boats run incredible. Now it's up to my guys to get this motor all painted up, mounted back on the back of the boat, and get these guys in the water. They're serious fishermen, and they can't wait to try out this new 300. Oh, I dropped something. I love the 300s, man. They're animals, man. I gotta be honest, we're gonna lift it with that cherry picker. I don't usually do these like that. We usually use the forklift. So I don't know how it's gonna go. I don't know why we didn't have a forklift available at that point, but we didn't. So we had a little cherry picker, engine hoist, whatever you wanna call it. The geometry just wasn't working out for me that well, and they did the best I could. Oh, that's my fault. We had a little, we had a little incident while the camera camera guy was helping me out there, because again, I was, I was, he sent me over there unprepared, like usual. Okay, now I gotta take a break. At that point, we just started tearing the motor down. Um, we, we take it completely apart. Uh, we're just taking off miscellaneous little items up here. This is your rigging grommet, so we're just gonna pull that out of the way so Mike can spray. Because we're doing a color change, you gotta take off extra stuff when you go white, because you're gonna see, you don't wanna see gray anywhere. If this was just going back a factory color, then it'd be one thing. But since we're going white, a lot, a lot's gonna show. We have a little bucket system, so certain parts of the engine are gonna go in this bucket and, and that, and then they all get sealed up and put away properly. But yeah, you definitely wanna kinda, if you haven't done a lot of them, I would recommend separating them, you know, lower unit parts, midsection parts, etc. You know, the importance of taking everything apart like we do is that, uh, once it does get painted and goes back together, it looks like that it was done at the factory. Well, now that Dave's gone, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and wash these, get all the grease and oils off of them. You're looking to get the grease off of areas around. Anything that's going, that the mechanics are gonna be greasing up, you gotta get all that off. If you don't, you know, you're gonna wind up with fish eyes and, and a really bad paint job overall. Now we're done cleaning. Most important part is taping it off before we sand it. With all the intricate little pieces that you have, you really have to make sure you watch out for any grommets or areas that don't need to be painted. 
Once you come to the cowlings, you got a lot of the stickers on there. You heat it up and you start bringing the blade behind it and just peeling it off. Once you get the whole sticker off, you're still left with a little bit of residue behind it. You really need to make sure that that adhesive is off because when you go into the final stages of sanding and prepping, it can really mess you up. Next step we're gonna do is go ahead and start sanding it and getting it prepped. 300, 400 grit. Get rid of all of the gloss and get it to a nice flat finish. And then we're basically ready to start wiping it and prepping it. When you strip a motor down like that, you've gotta make sure that everything is bagged off properly because the owner's spending a lot of money and the last thing he wants to do is pull a cowling off and see overspray all over his brand new motor he just bought. Once we get the parts hung, we'll do a final clean, getting any grease and wax off of there that might have been missed in any of the stages prior to where we're at now. And then we'll come back in one last time with a tack rag and do a final real light wipe to make sure the paint job comes out right. The boat that this motor is going on is already off white. So we're gonna go ahead and spray it off white just so it has a nice clean custom look instead of having just a regular gray motor on the back end of it. Very, very critical that I gotta watch where I'm doing my back and my front because the last thing you wanna do is be on your second or third coat and then bump into a part and then you're just gonna have to start all back over again. It's gonna be really nice to see the older motor come off that boat and a brand new motor go on there, freshly painted. I think it's really gonna make the boat pop. When we come back, Brian takes his 30-foot Grady White project for a spin, putting the new engines and electronics to the test. This segment brought to you by Armstrong Nautical Products, celebrating 25 years of creativity and innovation. Do you have the Armstrong Advantage? In its most basic form, an Armstrong outboard bracket improves the efficiency of your outboard motor. This equates to a faster time to plane and higher top speeds. The list of advantages continue with improved maneuverability, added space, and a quieter ride. Adding a swim platform accompanied by an Armstrong boarding ladder will certainly add to your day out on the water. Isn't it time for you to gain the Armstrong advantage? Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreambook. Anxious to find its new owner, Brian tests out new equipment on the 30-foot Grady White Project. All right, so a while back, I had a customer call me about a Grady White that they were gonna get rid of. I picked the boat up, I was gonna do a quick flip. Well, as things happen over here at Marine Customs, Brian decides to go over the top and do everything to the tens. We actually stripped the engines off the back, they had an old two-stroke power that we were gonna convert up to the four-stroke. I wanted someone that's gonna buy this boat for me to feel like they're in a brand new Grady. To make that happen, you've gotta have the four-stroke power on the back. Now, I actually had a client doing a repower, and I took a pair of his old 300s off, I completely disassembled them, we painted them all up, put the motors back together. Dave did an incredible job. They look like they just came out of the box like they're brand new. Now the rest of the boat got us a major makeover workout on the outside of the hull. Michael did a great job painting the hull. We put all the new 2017 graphics on the outside. And on the inside of the boat where the top came out, we actually repainted it, all gripped it, stripped it down. It looks like brand new. It looks like a new boat off an assembly line. We actually upgraded the boat with the new Bennett Auto Trim Pro. This boat trims itself automatically. So now someone's gonna be buying this old 98 Grady White and they're gonna have features that they don't even have in some of the 2018 models. So once the guys got the boat all wrapped up, I hooked it up to my truck and we hauled it down to the ramp. All right, so first impressions of this 30 Grady in the water with the engines running was like, geez, I'm in a brand new boat. I mean, that's what I felt like. I couldn't believe the attention to detail and how everything all wrapped and cleaned up the boat just came out incredible. Having those F300s on the back, the boat's night and day. I noticed leaning into the throttles how the boat lifted right up out of the water, laid down flat, and took off. It never did that before. But just the overall top end performance and mid-range, it was incredible. So typically when it comes to hooking up the electronics and setting everything up, I'll send Steve out. I don't have time to do that stuff, but I was kind of intrigued to see how these trim tabs are gonna work and how easy it was to set the system up. So while I was out on the boat, I simply pulled out my phone, I went to their website again. I scanned all the directions and instructions for setting up the system, I applied it, everything worked perfectly. It's kind of a one, two, three system, and it worked really nice. I floored the throttles, and the first thing I noticed were the lights moving. I wasn't touching the trim tabs. And then I noticed I could see clearly over the bow of the boat. 
That was a really neat feature. Before I had the trim tab set up, I noticed when the boat would take off that I had to adjust the tabs, otherwise I couldn't see over the bow. So these things, by deploying themselves automatically without me having to do it, actually brought the bow down and made a clearer line of sight for me. Someone a little shorter than me that might buy this boat or operate it in the future is gonna find this thing very simple to operate and drive, especially coming out of the hole. Now, outside of that, just running the boat, I noticed when I was coming into a turn, the tab would actually deploy itself and actually level out a little bit when I was hitting some waves. And with all these cool automatic features, you still have the ability to manually adjust these tabs. I found that very, very important because when you want the tabs to be somewhere, you reach down and you put them there and they're gonna stay. So all in all, the 30-foot Grady really came out awesome. I think I hit this one out of the park. From trimming it out with the nice electronics, with the late model four-stroke engines, the brand new trim tab system, and Vic did this killer upholstery where we embroidered everything. I can't wait to find a buyer for this. They're gonna love this boat. When we return, FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Alan Black aboard his 25-foot Boston Whaler Outrage in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Fiberglass Coatings, the largest selection of fiberglass materials in the United States. FGCI is a leading supplier of composite materials, family owned for over 60 years and headquartered right here in Florida. We have the materials and technical expertise to service manufacturers, repair professionals, and DIYers alike. Our gel coat color matching is a favorite of seasoned professionals and weekend warriors. Access our online store at FGCI.com, call to speak with a product specialist, or visit our stores in Fort Lauderdale or St. Petersburg. FGCI is your partner on boat projects big and small. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Today we meet up with Captain Alan Black of Stewart, Florida. Alan has restored a classic 1988 25-foot Boston Whaler Outrage. It's beautifully restored. I'm really looking forward to taking a ride on it. My name is Alan Black. I'm a professional sport fish captain here in Stewart, Florida and all over the world. I grew up in Walker's Key, Bahamas fishing with my father, Billy Black, on a boat called the Duchess. I'm the owner of a 1988 Boston Whaler that I have completely rebuilt in the last couple of years. Now I know that Alan Black had some history with this boat. Growing up on Walker's Key, he spent a lot of time going on a 25-foot whaler just like it, the water taxi that took people back and forth from Walker's to Grand Key. Also, the personal connection, having this boat gifted to him by a former employer, there's two different levels where this boat was really appealing to Alan. I was working for a fella named Frank Capo, and he knew that I was looking for a project, and he gave me the hull, and a couple of years ago, he passed away. In doing the project, I w wanted to do it up to Frank's standards, because he is a first-class guy. In approaching this project, having run boats for probably 30-plus years, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted out of the boat. It had been treated pretty rough, the console wasn't attached, the whole side was beat up, so I had to rebond the entire rub rail on the port side of the boat. That was probably the first order of business. Also, because it was full of water, we took all of the wood off the skins of the deck and vacuum bagged CUSA board onto the bottom side, so there's no wood left anywhere in the decks of this boat the entire thing, painted it. This is a 110% full rebuild. I got a custom console, custom bait well, redid all the decks, brand new hard top lights, underwater lights, electric reel outlets. I wanted to make sure that whatever I decided that I wanted to do, be it bone fishing on the flats in the Bahamas or diving with my son and my wife, sail fishing over here with dredges or day dropping for swordfish that I was able to do that. Alan, I noticed this thing reads bottom really well even when we're running. Yeah, um, one of the problems with little boats like this is a lot of times you have to put a transom mount transducer on them. So in order to overcome that problem, I actually mounted the transducer into the keel. 
So this thing, it's a dual 50, 200 kilohertz transducer and it'll read out to like 4,000 feet of water. You had to deal with some issues with the foam, I would imagine, too, in this, this boat, didn't This you? entire boat, is, it's, the unsink, yeah. it's the unsinkable boat. It's full of foam. So. Did you have to take foam out or, I mean? In, in the transom, I, I basically made a mold and I did have to take a little bit of foam out where I mounted the transducer yeah. up into the gotcha. keel. But there's all the original foam in this boat. It's still unsinkable. Now, Alan, I know you fabricated a lot of stuff here that's custom. Tell me a little yes, bit. Sir. I noticed right off the bat, tell me this console, obviously not original. What do you got going on here? Well, basically, it had the old whaler style console with all the stainless steel and, and wood and the big old windshield on it and everything. And that's not what I really wanted. So I cut that thing apart with a sawzall and I built this console around the skeleton. It still has the original uh, ice box up forward, but everything else is custom. It's all foam, fiberglass, and Kevlar. I took a lot of care when I was doing this to make sure that it was ergonomically comfortable to run the boat, whether it be in rough water or just sitting there watching the baits or sitting at the sandbar. I was very careful routing wiring and everything to make sure that I left as much room for stuff as I possibly could for those long Bahamas trips over to Rosie's. Once I got the console done, I designed the hardtop, built the hardtop, and brought it up to primer. And then I brought it back to my house and installed all of the lighting and electrical, the recess running lights, all the backing plates for everything. The Taco outriggers are fantastic outriggers and I had to make sure that I put a backing plate in where those handles would be because there is a lot of force that's put on those things and I'll actually run with those outriggers out and they hold out. So the name of my boat is, is Zephos. What a Zephos is, is a Greek two-edged sword, double-edged sword. When I was given this boat, it was fantastic. Everybody's like, oh great, you're given a free boat. But I always said that's a double-edged sword because I've got about two years of my life and a lot of money into building this boat the way I want it. But I think Frank would be very, very proud of what it's become. Alan, I don't <laughs> want to send you the wrong message, buddy, but you're so meticulous about how you keep your boat. And I don't want you to think that I came down here to wash it. I'm too cheap to get you anything Look for taking this, the time man. out, but our friends at Surehold are not, so we got you a nice little gift here. Only the best. Yeah, take a look at what's inside there. You're going to think this bucket's pretty nifty. Awesome, man. It was obvious that Alan took great pride in the appearance of his boat, so we hooked him up with a bunch of stuff to keep the boat looking great. He managed to take an old classic boat and bring it up to speed into the 21st century and make it a really worthy offshore modern fishing boat. After receiving the hull as a gift, spending $13,500 on engines and $22,800 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Allen's dream boat comes to a total of $36,300. When we return, the crew at MCU works to get the 25-foot contender back on the water with brand new power on the transom. This segment brought to you by Taco Marine, innovative quality products with extraordinary service. The following is presented by Taco Marine. Right here is why all the long hours. This is your escape. Fishing is your passion. It's time to turn out, set out, clip, raise lines, raise fish, raise your heart rate, raise your opportunities. Only with Taco Grand Slam Outrigger mounts and telescoping poles. For the finest, most reliable outrigger systems made, go to tacomarine.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the crew at MCU assembles and rigs the freshly painted F-300 for the 25-foot contender project. So after Mike got done painting, he decided to leave all the tape on everything. The, I, I now know why I don't get a pay raise. Because Mike uses that much tape. And there's just no room in the budget for Dave to get a pay raise. But overall, the guy does a good job, you know. Usually the paint goes where the paint needs to be and nowhere else, so he's, he's spot on there. If we can just work on him removing the tape would be a plus. So once you get all that, you wanna go ahead and start getting your buckets out again 
and uh, decide where you're going to go. You know, you work from the top down, and you're going to take your bolts out, lay them out so you can see where they're going to go. And everything should go back nice and, and clean and easy. Once I got the new engine all assembled and everything looked great, I had to head back to our other shop and get the old engine off. Get a little, uh-oh. It's an extra piece, we don't need it. God, and they always roll, they always roll. If you're the only one around and you get rid of the extra parts, then nobody knows there was no extra parts. <laughs> Will Robbie be, oh my God. <laughs> this is terrible. A few years back, we did refit this boat, and uh, apparently when I rehung the motor, I had a little too much 5200 on there, and uh, the removal was quite challenging. There it is. Oh, man. Thank God it ended in a spot where it, it, it dinged the paint in a spot where nobody would see. And if nobody could see it, it didn't happen. Once everything was taken off that boat and cleaned up, ready to go, uh, we had to hook it up to the truck, drive over to the paint shop, and uh, go ahead and hang the motor there, and then drive it back here where we would finish our uh, refit. So once Dave finished wrapping up the rigging on the 25 Contender, I was totally anxious. I couldn't wait to get out on the water and see trial that F300. The boat ran incredibly. It had the factory stock propeller. I didn't do nothing special. I just bolted a 19 Saltwater Series 2 prop on there, and the boat just ran great. This customer is going to be so stoked about the money they invested in this boat. Not only did they gain fuel burn, but they actually gained almost eight miles an hour on the top end. The boat actually rides a lot smoother. That little bit of weight towards the aft end of the boat puts the boat in a different ride position. It adjusted the CG just enough to where it actually increased the ride quality of the boat. I was really impressed with that. I laid this thing into a couple of big waves and it just laid down really nicely. So from a performance standpoint, we really hit it out of the park. Now on the cosmetic side, Dave did a great job pulling that motor completely apart. After Mike applied the paint and actually got everything put together, the thing looks incredible. I think the guy's gonna be totally static with the finish and fit of the product. It just looks great, the boat totally flows together. I mean, to spend a couple of thousand dollars on a paint job on a brand new engine, people might think that's a little crazy, but don't forget, this is a tender on the back of a 61 foot sport fishing boat, and I don't think a couple of thousand bucks is gonna dig this guy's pocket. Next week on Florida Sportsman Project Dreambook, Brian and the crew work to put custom touches on a 23 foot Allberry Brothers. FS Boating Editor George Labonte heads out with Todd Fliss on his decked out Scandi White, an aluminum skiff built for the backcountry. And the team at MCU takes on restoring a 31-foot contender that has seen better days. The filming of Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat has been shot on location at Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it, we build it.